anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. It would be as valid to say anything the mind can believe, the mind can achieve, but I wish to emphasize the power of the human mind. No other living creature can take hold of its mind as we do. Sense and explore its powers. Find ways to increase those powers to an extent almost beyond imagination. You are used to being human. Take time now and then to realize the uniqueness of your human state. Ask yourself, what do I want? This is not a question to be answered lightly. What do you want? I give you a list to aid your thinking. Improvement of your general health. Improvement of some specific health or functional factor. Cure of any bad habit. Abolishment of fear. The ability to find the right mate in marriage. Weight reduction or gain. The ability to break away from outworn customs or outmoded ways of life. The ability to get along better with other people. The ability to sway others to your way of thinking. Inner guidance in the selection of a business or profession. When you know what you want, you are ready to go after it. You need a definite chief aim. Vague mind conceptions are little better than mere wishes. Decide where you are going. Then and only then do you begin to see the signposts that point the way. You are going to make money, and I trust you to see it as only one form of wealth, but, as I have pointed out, a form of wealth which helps us attain many others. The chances are that you automatically accept money as a goal, so let us take this goal as a prototype in illustrating autosuggestion. Now, this is the way to use autosuggestion to help you achieve the sum of money you want. It is done in six steps which stimulates your subconscious mind. 1. Find a quiet spot where you can be alone and undisturbed. Many find that as they lie in bed just before going to sleep, the mind becomes receptive. Close your eyes and repeat aloud, listening to your own words, the sum of money you intend to make the time limit you have set for its accumulation, and a description of the service or merchandise you intend to give or to sell in return for that money. 2. Put the same words in writing. You may do this first if you wish. Write it out carefully and in detail. Memorize it. When you go into your quiet place to repeat your goal to yourself, say it word for word as you have written it. You may change it here and there until it is absolutely specific. Add a statement of this nature in your own words. I believe that I will have this money in my possession. My belief is so strong that I now can see the money before my eyes. I am holding it in my hands. I know it exists, and it is awaiting transfer to me in return for my services rendered with full honesty and all possible skill and diligence. A plan exists which will transfer this sum, state the sum, to me by, state the deadline date, and my receptive mind will see that plan and cause me to follow it. See yourself rendering the service or delivering the merchandise. See yourself receiving your payment. This is important. 3. Place a written copy of your statement where you will see it night and morning. Read it upon rising. Read it again just before retiring. You may also carry it with you and read it several times a day. But to read it first thing in the morning and last thing at night is particularly important. Again, as you read, see yourself going through the actions which will bring you the money. Feel the money in your hands. Feel with feeling. Merely reading the words or saying them to yourself will mean nothing unless they carry the emotional charge of desire. It is well known that the subconscious has less regard for reason than it does for emotion. 4. Put the mastermind principle to work. It is not always possible to form a mastermind group, and you are better off without one than doing it the wrong way. You can, however, make good use of the principle by conferring with the right people. These are people who can help you, and if possible, people you can help.
Don't forget, if you want to see a banker about financing your business, you are helping him run his business. And don't forget, many a cold-blooded banker has been swayed by the confidence and belief and enthusiasm he sees in a would-be borrower, with good reason. The more people you talk to, the more information you will receive, the more they know, the more you know. Choose the right people, however. Now and again you will meet among them one whose mind tunes into yours. Speaking with such a person is a mighty tonic for the subconscious drives you have at your direction. 5. When your plan appears, act upon it. You will know it. The subconscious is like a fertile garden spot in which any seed will grow, be it the seed of a weed or the seed of your fortune. Through auto-suggestion, you work wonders in keeping out the weed seeds. When a seed of your fortune falls in the garden of your subconscious, however, it grows in relation to the attention you give it. Do not sit idly waiting for your plan to appear. You may not precisely know, for example, where you are going to set up your business. But until the right place draws your attuned attention, you can be contacting sources of supply, learning more about the business, and filling your mind with the process of your achievement in a hundred other ways. Remember how publishers came to me when I needed them. 6. Once you have a matured plan which covers every detail, put that plan in writing. Read it over night and morning. Stick to it but be ready to change it if circumstances point out the advisability of a change. Your mind will not constantly flutter from one alternative to another. Your subconscious will sift the alternatives with a great power to show you what you must do to attain your goal. I could set down faith as a seventh factor of autosuggestion. But faith is all-pervasive. Faith is called the head chemist of the mind. As faith blends with thought, it becomes the perfect ingredient for true subconscious belief. As faith becomes part of you, it rides along with every message you repeat to yourself. It becomes part of your character, part of your personality. Faith helps you emotionalize your thoughts, brings them beyond the power of reason into another realm of mental being where thoughts become their physical equivalent. Every man can surpass himself. We all have our role to play individually, but we only play it well on condition of always trying to do better, of overreaching ourselves. It is this effort which constitutes our personal participation in evolution, our duty. If we have children, we will have collaborated in a measure modestly, statistically, but unless we develop our personality, we will have left no trace in the true human evolution. An intelligent being carries within him the wherewithal to surpass himself. It is needful for him to know it, and it is essential for him to attempt to realize it. The incomparable gift of brain, with its truly amazing powers of abstraction, has rendered obsolete the slow and sometimes clumsy mechanisms utilized by evolution so far. Thanks to the brain alone, man, in the course of three generations only, has conquered the realm of air, while it took hundreds of thousands of years for animals to achieve the same result through the process of evolution. Thanks to the brain alone, the range of our sensory organs has been increased a millionfold, far beyond the fondest dreams. We see the infinitely small and we see the infinitely remote. We hear the inaudible. We have dwarfed distance and killed physical time. We have enslaved the forces of the universe even before we have succeeded in understanding them thoroughly. We had put to shame the tedious and time-consuming methods of trial and error used by nature. Because nature has finally succeeded in producing its masterpiece in the shape of the human brain, but the great laws of evolution are still active, even though adaptation has lost its importance as far as we are concerned. We are now responsible for the progress of evolution. We are free to destroy ourselves if we misunderstand the meaning and purpose of our victories, and we are free to forge ahead, to prolong evolution, to cooperate with God if we perceive the meaning of it all. 
if we realize that it can only be achieved through a wholehearted effort toward moral and spiritual development. Peace of Mind and Power of Mind Since what you achieve in life depends on what you first conceive, and this depends, first of all, upon your deep, inner, subconsciously founded belief, you see that your life depends upon your power to believe. No, your mere life processes do not depend upon this power. The Eternal has made it possible for the supreme achievement of evolution, man, to stay alive even without knowing he is alive. The beating of the heart, the pumping of the lungs, the processes of digestion and other vital functions are taken care of by a part of the brain which takes care of itself. Beyond this, man creates an even better species. He aspires and climbs to the heights of his aspiration. Seeing heights yet beyond, again he aspires and achieves that peak beyond which lies another and another. Significantly, philosophers always have recognized the power of the quiet mind, the peaceful mind. This is far from being a mind empty of aspiration. It is rather a mind which can hold, judge, and evaluate the highest forms of aspiration. Nor is a peaceful mind the exclusive property of a person who does not move about in the world and busy himself with the world's manifold affairs. For some of the most peaceful minds are the busiest. Remember, we speak of inner peace like a quiet center about which all else revolves, like a great rotating dynamo doing useful work and filled with energy, yet referring its rotation always to the unmoved pivot at its middle. A mind at peace is a mind that is free to conceive greatly. It bears no great conflicts within its subconscious, which may hamper the conscious mind and therefore conscious action. A mind at peace is a free mind. Its power is limitless. Form your great beliefs on the basis of inward peace, and they will be truly great, and they will be possible of achievement. Not possible to everyone, perhaps but possible to the man who knows that peace of mind and power of mind are the same. Who told you it couldn't be done? What great achievement has he to his credit that entitles him to use the word impossible? Anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. This is the supreme secret, forever the foundation secret of man's effort to control his destiny. Conceive a great step forward in your life, form a deep subconscious belief, and the belief becomes the very foundation of reality. Wishing won't make it so, for a mere wish does not penetrate the depths of the mind, but a true belief becomes part of your complete being. Conscious and Subconscious Your subconscious mind is your hidden boss. Although your conscious mind controls your conscious actions, the subconscious dictates the pattern of those actions. If subconsciously you are afraid to do something, you may fill in with excuses and evasions which prevent you from taking that action. But your subconscious can be persuaded to change any of its standing orders and thus completely change your life. Your subconscious mind is the seat of a deep belief which becomes your constant guide. The subconscious knows no limit to its power. The proper use of the subconscious mind puts us in touch with forces beyond the ordinary senses. Thoughts can be transmitted to the subconscious mind of a sleeping person, bypassing the guard of the conscious mind. This is the secret of seeming miracles of healing. Methods of sleep learning may eventually be so perfected as to open great new horizons of mental power. Knowing that what the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve, you can see that deep belief opens great vistas of opportunity. In order to get what you want, you must focus your belief on a definite chief aim. Peace of mind and power of mind go hand in hand, and the mind at peace is the mind most capable of great conceptions, great beliefs, and the enjoyment of those beliefs as solid realities.